Hello and welcome to number four of my production vlog of Colors of the Wind, a dystopian short film that I'm producing on my own completely, basically. Today I want to talk a little bit about my approach to my semi 2D, semi 3D workflow and it is very, very new for me to try to combine it and figure out what kind of art style I want to have or how to transfer my 2D art style into the 3D world, into the 3D realm. And I've made some progress that I wanted to share. So the scene I'm working on is, I think it's scene number six, and it is basically a garbage truck that drives in reverse towards the camera and I want to... there are a couple of elements that I cannot animate in 2D like the wheels or the tires uh, this is basically the the crucial 3D element that is tricky to to do in in 2D so I've decided to combine this one of my favorite technologies there is, it's called camera projection mapping. And I utilize this quite a bit in this scene and I wanted to share my thoughts and my progress with you. So this is basically the scene and similar to the character workflow, I isolated all the, all the parts that might have some kind of depth to them uh, for instance like a, like a back part then the sort of a bumper or some cables and in my mind if each of these elements is projected onto a layer you have this slight parallax effect and you can basically trick the eye into thinking that there is some kind of depth and I like the visual style about it if things are completely modeled 3D and perfectly mapped and perfectly textured it loses this weird appeal that that uh, parallax has for me and this is like this this weird meta state between 2D and 3D basically anyway this is the style i'm going for so you see this is these are the layers and i've imported them into my 3D program and if i go to my camera this is how it looks like so basically you have it's like like a cup, uh, cutboard style, you know. Uh, from the side, you will see it looks extremely flat, and I tried to give it a little bit of geometry by tilting them, or uh, giving it a little bit of a geometry. Of course, from different angles, you will see we have a lot of textural distortion because there is no information, and th so the three D programs just stretches this texture but it's all mapped from the camera perspective so the point where this camera is is our viewpoint and from this point we basically project it onto the geometry and to further illustrate this point we have a background and I've already prepared a background material for it so I apply it and I think it's not properly adjusted yes um, so we want to have camera mapping and we assign the camera to it and calculate it. So this is sort of the background. And from our perspective, it looks kind of right. It's very rough, but just to illustrate the idea. So from this perspective, it looks all right. But once I go out of the camera, we can actually see how distorted this whole thing is. It's like a beamer. It's like a projector, basically. But all this mess that is going on here is not interesting for us. Maybe I can... Uh, yeah, I, I eliminate detailability so you can see it more clearer. So this is how it looks like. But I won't be recording from this perspective. Most of the stuff will be happening from a fixed camera view and it works pretty well here. And the good thing about 3D camera mapping is I can shift the camera a little bit and I still have this 3D effect which is great without modeling and texturing everything from scratch. So you're saving a lot of time and it has a certain appeal. There is 
one slight disadvantage though. Camera projection mapping works perfectly well with static objects, but once they have to move or once the geometry is uh, distorted by some kind of underlying animation, bones or character animation, it doesn't really work anymore or it works extremely limited. So what you have to do is you have to bake the texture on your geometry. Um, maybe you can imagine this if you have a wall or like you have a box and a beamer and the beamer projects some kind of image on the box. If you move the box, the image will stay in this place, but it will be distorted by the geometry. And now not even distorted, it will basically stay in place. But if you move the geometry, the image won't move with it. So you have to bake it under the object in order for it to be movable. I solved this problem a little bit. Uh, I hope I can, or I hope it's understandable how I, how I solve this. So this is my projection camera and this is my geometry. And since I know that the geometry in, its, in itself won't, won't be moving, the individual, there are no parts that will be moving, but the, uh, the whole the, the geometry as a whole will be moving. I just put the camera, the projection camera and the geometry into one group. So once I'm moving this group, the ca camera moves w with it and the problem is solved. So I don't have to take the step of baking the geometry on, uh, baking the image onto the geometry. If this wouldn't be the case, I have just, uh, I've just put the camera out of my geometry field, then this happens. You know, I can move the geometry, but the projection point stays the same. Okay, so much for this part. Uh, the next step are the tires. I will deactivate this because I haven't animated it yet, but I have animated the tires. So, as you can see, they are moving and the idea is that the trucks rolls backwards and stops and what's really difficult to convey in animation is weight and i've tried i've tried to convince the eye that there is some kind of weight behind it so first i animated basically the path of the tires and then they stop and roll backwards a little bit. Like you can imagine, if you see trucks stopping, they have this rocking motion because of all the mass they're carrying. But that wasn't enough. And as you can see, the tires are also squished at the bottom. Like they're not completely inflated, slightly deflated, and you have all this waste, all this garbage in this truck that is basically pushing everything down or in, into the direction of the of the braking motion basically and the way how I did that was a little trick and I took a um, deformer whoops sorry for this clutter I took a deformer it's called FFD deformer and as you can see this deformer has the uh, how do you call it has the um, attribute basically that you can build a mesh around your geometry and then you can deform this mesh and this deformation will be transferred in a homogeneous way and I've animated these outer points so whenever I am moving in my timeline you maybe can see that the outer points are being pulled outwards which creates this squishing motion and the bottom of the cage is pushed basically upwards so uh, it's probably easier to see from this perspective yes exactly so this is how it how it's done one other thing that I'm I'm quite satisfied with it to be honest because I've never done something like this before one other little aspect that I I'm not sure maybe someone out there knows how to solve this is the following this curve, as you can see, is basically the the point of the center axis of a tire. So this is this point. And I have the ability or the capability, Cinema 4D has it, to animate this 
with curves and tangents like this one so the stopping motion can be can ease out and the rocking back motion can be eased in as they say in animation terms so basically I can make it smooth but once I go into point animation mode and animating the cage I don't have this possibility anymore every motion is basically linear there is no no easing out or easing in it's just we move from from this point or from this position to this position linearly fortunately it works it doesn't look as bad but I I wish there would be a possibility to animate this also a little bit more smoothly and maybe there are better tools for it I assume there are workarounds for it but this was a th was a thing that academically I wasn't very happy with though the result is okay okay so much for this production vlog the next step will be to animate this whole geometry package and then export it in different pass-throughs so basically I will export the tires on a separate layer the whole truck geometry stuff on a separate layer the shadows on a separate layer and the background on a separate layer and I will assemble it in After Effects and adjust it because as you can see there's a thing that uh, I'm not super happy with in the 3D application because it's just I would have to program shaders and I'm not good at it yet but once I render it out I have the problem that the G 3D geometry is still too crisp it's it has too much contrast it's too clear and I have to find a way to smudge it a little bit and give it a slightly more painterly look I'm not entirely sure how to do this maybe this approach was not perfect maybe they have too much real geometry maybe it would be better to have simple tires and paint paint all this little ribbons or however you call it on the profile basically on the on the tires this is something that I've just decided from a conceptual point of view because I downloaded a 3d model uh, from the tires and I thought yeah man they have they have this cool uh, profile I like it maybe I can somehow fuse it with my 2d, 2D style and probably I will have to do this in in post-production so we will see and uh, just want to render it out one more time with the shadow so you can see the shadow yeah and this this shadow that is being dropped from the whole truck interacts with the tires and I, I really like this because it gives me the illusion that all the stuff is somehow tied together oh, maybe another funny point this plane here actually casts the shadow because without this plane there is nothing that could cast a shadow in, on the tires there is no geometry so it's a lot of fakery going on here but you don't see it so I don't have to spend the time building something that you never will see alright then I'll keep it short and leave it at that thank you for your attention thank you for all the patrons who support me if you like to know more about this project if you stumbled upon this video and like to know more you can check it out in the description box there will be a link and until next time see you around peace